what is up YouTube my name is Jonathan and today we are doing another Photoshop tutorial today we are doing clone stamping and some patch tool work in a uh, spare bedroom of a house that I took photos of uh, they had done some touch-up paint and in the pictures it was very very obvious uh, normally I wouldn't do this but according to the realtor they are going to be uh, repainting the rooms so for all of those out there that would instantly be, oh, that's unethical, blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't know what to tell you. It's not my job. So anyways, let's uh, let's do the whole photo editing thing. All right, so we're in Photoshop. I have the photo open. The first thing that I'm going to do, the first thing, Control-J, to duplicate that layer. This way, we are working on another layer, and we are not going to destroy the original layer and if we do something we don't like, we can just erase it or start over by deleting the layer. It's just way more easy this way, I guess. I don't know, that's just how it work. So I have the patch tool open first. We're gonna start here and see how things go. I have my uh, patch set to content aware. Structure is two-ish and then zero for color. And so we're gonna get started over here on this side of the room. We're just gonna do this a whole bunch of times. Hopefully this does not take a terribly long time. Yes, I'm charging extra for the extra editing for anybody else that has any questions. So many people are so nosy when it comes to these things. Hopefully this doesn't, like I said, take too terribly long. So we're gonna do this a whole bunch and I'm gonna speed up to the end and we'll see the end process. And we've done that for a while, obviously uh, getting there, but I'm going to switch to the clone stamp tool and that is this tool right here. You can hit S on your keyboard or click that button. And then you can click the left and right square brackets to adjust the brush size, or you can hold alt right click and then drag left or right to change the brush size. Just a little trick there. Again, that's click, hold alt right click drag your mouse left and right to adjust the size of the brush that you are using and we're going to do something like that it's way faster than looking on your keyboard for a hotkey shortcut or right clicking changing the size or any other version of changing the size of the brush that you wish to use but we're we that's the typically the way i do it or i use the left and right bracket keys usually if i'm in my brush I'm just sitting there anyways, have my fingers sitting over them. I have to hit Alt to use the clone stamp brush tool anyways. Uh, so I do not use this at 100% opacity. Usually it varies, uh, whatever, you'll find whatever looks the best for that photo. It's not always the same and we're gonna get started. I will speed this part up because it's just me doing a lot of clone stamping, that's boring. Okay, so that's done with that half of the wall. I say it's not perfect. We got rid of some of the shadow from the, uh, whatchamacall, the curtains things. I don't know if you can hear that. There's a plane flying over right now. All right, we're gonna switch to this other side of the wall and I think I'm going to go back to the uh, patch tool to get a lot of the edges down further and then we'll use the clone stamp tool to finish it off like we did on the other side. So I'm gonna get started. All right, so we've done the edge portion and now I'm going to do more clone stamping than anything. The really loud barking is apparently my little dog. She's a six and a half pound Yorkie. She just got a bath. She's kind of fired up after that. So yeah, just ignore that. I'm gonna speed up through this part anyways. So yeah. So I don't know if you noticed what I did there. Um, I made the brush bigger and then I used a lower opacity to try and make the fade where it's, because if you keep using this portion of the wall, eventually the whole wall is gonna look like that and that's not normal, that's gonna look weird. Uh, so what I did was made the brush a little bigger and then I used the, I lowered the opacity to kind of try and make the, the fade into this darker corner of the room a little softer so it's not such a harsh change from one color to the other. So that's why I did that. And I'm going to continue clone stamping. All 
we're just going to make the brush smaller and lower the opacity down to make this edge a little softer so all we're trying to do is make this transition softer so it's not so obvious that it goes from light to dark because there is some going to be some change with the way the light is shining through this window it obviously looks like there's some light bouncing around in here so we're going to call that good for this wall then we just have this small section of the wall left hopefully this doesn't take that long Okay, so I think I'm done. Uh, that didn't take too terribly long, I don't think. With some talking in between, if I just sat down and cranked this out, it probably would have taken three or four minutes, five minutes maybe. But I uh, hope this helps somebody. Uh, so this is one way to do it. Uh, I'm actually going to be looking into another way of changing, fixing this sort of thing when it's on such a large scale. It's not such a big deal when it's just a few patches here and there, but uh, when it's such a large room, uh, so like this one, this one wasn't so hard. Like this is the only thing that I fixed in this room. So you change that back up. You can't really see that anymore. Uh, this room, same room, different wall. Not too terribly difficult to fix that. Uh, boom, gone. You know what I mean? So, but when it's such a big room, it's such, or it's such a big portion of the wall, you don't have a lot of wall to choose from. So I'm going to be looking into another way to do this that I think will work. But if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe, like this video, share this video. Hope this helps somebody. God bless. Stay safe. And we will see you in the next one.